Hey guys, it's James here from e Bass Guitar and today's lesson is all about playing pick bass. I'm going to share three tips that the pros use to make switching between finger star and using a pick or a plectrum really seamless and sound really, really cool. Hey guys, it's James here from ebassguitar.com and I've had a question from Jeff who's one of my Bass Lab Plus subscribers in my membership and it was along the lines of is it okay to use pick and if you're not sure what pick is that's where you play the bass with a plectrum or a bit of plastic like this. So players like Paul McCartney Duff McKegan uh, or Keegan um, and Mike Dern from uh, Green Day have all famously used this technique. Uh, it came from playing guitar originally and transferred into the bass. And there's a lot of discussion of whether it's okay, quote unquote, to play the bass uh, with a pick. And I wanted to talk about that in this lesson. But first of all, I want to play you finger style first of all, which is the technique I probably use most of the time, and pick so you can hear the exact difference, and then we'll talk about it. One, two, three, five. Now we're gonna swap over to pick, and so you can hear the difference that brings to the bass tone. One, two, three, so hopefully you've got a good idea now of how the tones of finger style and pick actually vary on a more sort of wider level. Obviously there are loads of subtleties depending on how your amp set up and what bass you're using etc etc but I'm sure you've got a feel for the sound. Now in the bass world there's a certain degree of snobbery over finger style and pick. Obviously people who play finger style obviously believe some people they say believe it's vastly superior and in all honesty that was probably the feeling when I went through music college. College, I don't know when I was 18, 19, 20, that that was the only way to play. And I remember very, very vividly going uh, and watching one of the great British bass players, a guy called Steve Pearce, on a session. And suddenly he pulled out this pick for that he had stuck in the scratch plate of his Sadowski, I think. And he said to me, I bet they didn't teach you to do this at music college. And that stuck with me. And he suddenly went on this session in one of the top studios in London playing and got the pick out. And but, oh my god, was that it, the most appropriate thing to do at that moment of time? Yes, it was. It was sounded fantastic and it really suited the track and what the producer was trying to achieve there. So yes, pick is perfectly acceptable in my view and I personally think it's an amazing noise. I think soon after that experience was the moment I really fell in love with that sound. Now the difference between the two sounds in my opinion is that fingerstyle tends to always blend. It's a much, much softer sound. And so you get it punchy, of course, but it will generally sit in a mix in a band really, really well. However, when you switch to pick, what it does is it has a really aggressive edge to it. So it can often bring out the clank of the bass, and that's why bands like Blink-182, Green Day, etc. Offspring love that sound. It's a really, really great sound from that perspective. Um, but the one thing I would say about it is that you can generally, by and large, always hear it at the bottom end of a mix. It really cuts, and it doesn't blend so well, in my opinion. So I always play pick when I want a very very specific sound so, and I want that pick sound. I don't in any respect uh, look down on it thinking finger style is more superior than pick, um, but I tend to play finger style most of the time, but I'm more than comfortable to pull this out when the moment calls for it. I think it's a great sound. I remember I did the uh, Green Day show American Idiot a couple of years ago. I did a run of that in London and I played pick uh, almost exclusively for a couple of weeks on that and it was such fun, particularly if you've done in a little bit of overdrive on the amp. Um, this particular tone hammer there has uh, the drive setting and it can be re a really, really effective bass tone. 
So what I want to do is give you three tips now. So if you're a finger star player and you're swapping to, um, or you want to try playing pick, I want to give you three tips that are going to make it a bit easier. If you're already a pick player, please do listen out to these because sometimes this can give you a little light bulb moment and improve your picking technique somewhat. So tip number one is use your wrist. So the movement we're looking for comes from here. What it is not, is not an arm movement. So it's not from that elbow down there. You can get much, much more control if you use your wrist because the elbow works like a lever. So a little movement there will equal a big movement here. And that can cause control issues. But if we do this, we can have a big movement here, which gives us so much more control and feel, etc., etc. So that is the first one. Make sure you are using a wrist, and I like to use it as an up and down action like that. Also, another little smaller tip is try and envisage the pick as an extension of your first finger too. That's really, really helpful too. But back to that. So it's literally like that on its side. It's not a twisting action, and it's not an elbow action too. It is a wrist action like that. The second tip is to anchor on the base using the palm. So if you ever see me playing pick, um, I will always have my palm somewhere on the, on the base. You can do it on the bridge like this, or you could actually have them gently resting on the strings like so. And that gives us an anchor point there so we're not sort of flapping around in mid air. So try and always have some part of your hand touching the strings or the bridge. And the great thing that you can start to do with this if you get it down, not only is it an anchor point and gives you so much more control, is you can actually start to do some palm muting too. So you can go from this clanky sound like that down to sounding like you're on a 70s cop show. That sort of thing. So there's a lot of tonal possibilities that you can do if you start to anchor down. Now, this is the third tip, which I wish I'd have known earlier, kind of in my bass playing career, is that we have two strokes. We have the down stroke, like that, down stroke, and up stroke, like that. And what we can do is we can use these to mimic our first and our second finger. So it's like alternate picking, basically. Alternate fingering, like that, can turn into alternate picking, which is really cool. So what you do on your first finger um, can happen on a downstroke, like this, and what you do on your second finger can turn into an upstroke. So if we're doing this, it can turn into this. And if we're practicing scales, um, anything that you play with your first finger uh, can play with down, anything you play with your second finger can turn into an up, like this. And to do it finger style. Obviously this is a rule of thumb and it doesn't uh, you don't wouldn't do it 100% of the time, but probably a good 90 odd percent plus it will work and gives you a real basis to work out bass lines and also work out what picking, uh, whether you should be a down or on a down or an up pick. So those are the three tips just to run through them again is to use the wrist is number one. Number two is anchor like that, and number three is to do alternate picking. So uh, what you do with your first finger with finger style, you do with a down, and what you do with your second finger, uh, you do with an up. Now, I wanna give you three picking patterns that you can practice to get going on this now. So the first one we're gonna do is good old pumping eights. So to do that with finger style, it'd be. Like so. Don't well, forget, I'll have these written out in the 3D PDF which comes with this. And so you can see these lines. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna do that with up and down alternate picks now. So let's put this to track so you can hear what this sounds like in context.
So the second exercise, what we're gonna do is a load of off beats. So let me play it to you to begin with. So it's going. So this is one and then on one and, and then two and, three and, and four and, like so, dun gun. And the principle of this is that you always get the ands on the upbeat. So if you imagine this is going on like this on autopilot, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. All we start doing is actually missing out the notes on the beat. The down pick actually in reality is still happening, it's just happening in mid-air, so... And it goes down. Because to do the up pick you have to do the down pick, but what that crucially does is it keeps this movement that's going on with your uh, wrist just really, really, really solid, which is really cool, so. So let's see what this sounds like in context. So the last exercise I want to give you is this one. So. It's like the idea of disco doubles that I'm sure you've seen me teach before. But all on the same note. It has a really great chugging sound to it. So if we put this together, what this is, is an eighth note and two sixteenth notes. So. Slow down, bum, 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 bum. One and a two. Okay, so we're playing on the first beat, and then we're playing halfway through the and, and then we're playing on the last 16. So da, ga, ga, da, ga, ga, da. Remember, please do download the free PDF which comes with the lesson, and you'll see this all written out. Now, the crucial thing from a picking perspective is we do two downs. So bum, 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 bum. Down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down. It's a little bit like the uh, disco doubles where we actually go across on the, we need to go one, when we shift across the octave, it's actually the same principle. So it's two downs and an up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate this concept now uh, because I find this a really exciting pattern to play. And then after a little while, I'm going to start breaking out a bit so you can see uh, some of the ideas where this can go and the sound of the pick, how effective it can be to get that more kind of punky sound. So let's try it. Guys, that was my take on how to play pick bass and the techniques that I find work really well for me. Please do comment below and let us know about your pick technique. Do you like the sound? Do you hate it? Is it something that you're really, really comfortable doing? I'd love to know all about it, so please do comment below. Also, please do give this a like and share on social and make sure you download the free PDF which comes with this lesson. I've been James from eBay's Guitar, and I'll catch you next time. Cheers for now.